What's up everyone, Takedown here. Welcome back to another video. As you guys might know, I'm a Canadian eBay reseller. And today, because sales have been slow lately, I decided to sit down and finally make my eBay Q&A video, answering some of your questions. Now, some of you guys comment on some of my eBay videos, but some of you guys just message me individually on either Facebook or Instagram. And today I'm gonna to be answering some of your questions. The first question, where do you source your items? For me, literally anywhere that I can find a great deal. Facebook Marketplace, Kijiji, thrift stores, yard sales, you name it. If I can find a deal, I'll go to them and see what they have. Now for Facebook Marketplace and Kijiji, that's online. Normally I'll stay within my niche of video games and things like that, but I've seen a lot more lately that people are asking way more than what something is worth. And I can't even come back with an offer because I still won't make much profit if they even were to accept my offer and come down even just a little bit. So most of the time it's very hard to find deals, especially within video games or my niche, but I still look almost daily to try to find what there is. Now thrift stores and yard sales in my area because of COVID, they're still not a thing. Once they open up, I think I'll go and check them out again because I made some pretty decent profit at thrift stores. It's just sometimes they're hit or miss for me. That's why I stay with Kijiji or Facebook Marketplace and I found great deals and made great profit, but sometimes it's slow to get those. The next question, how do you ship your sold items? For me, it depends on what I sell. If it's an individual video game, usually I'll put a little piece of bubble wrap inside so the disc doesn't bounce around inside the uh, case. And then I'll put that in a poly bubble mailer and I'll ship that anywhere in Canada for $3.19. To the US, it's about $10 or more, depending on where it's going in the US. If it's a bigger lot, whether it's a console and a bunch of games or whatever it is, normally I'll put it in a box and ship it, of course, with tracking. Now for me, whenever I ship my items, if it's a video game that's over, I wanna say $25, normally I'll add tracking to it, which does cost $14 anywhere in Canada or $18 anywhere in the US. But to me, it is worth it if it's over that amount and the buyer does pay that extra cost of shipping anyways. The next question, how do you deal with returns? Very simple, follow eBay's return policy. Now, even if you don't accept returns, if the item that the buyer receives and they claim that it's not as described, you have to accept the return. There's no way around it. eBay will give them the money back whether you receive the item back or not. Now, if it's an item that's for me personally is under $10 and they say there's a problem with it, it doesn't work, I'll just accept the loss and I'll just send them the money back. Plain and simple. I don't want a headache over a $10 item and I don't want to pay for return postage and then have an even more loss whenever it does sell again, it's not going to be much profit. So I might as well just give them their $10 back. If it's something that's worth a lot more money, number one, normally I'll ask them what's going on, try to work it out. If it doesn't work properly or that's what they're claiming, I'll ask for photos. If it's broken, I'll ask for photos and I'll ask for it to be shipped back to me and I'll pay for return postage. Now, normally if you ask for it back, they normally will stop. I had an Xbox a while ago. They said there's a problem with it. I tried to walk them through it. They ended up saying that they just wanted their money back. I said, that's fine. If you can provide me photos and ship it back, I'll pay the postage. Then I'll return your money once I do receive it back. And all of a sudden they said it was working fine. So when it comes to returns, follow eBay's return policy, plain and simple. Sometimes it favors the buyer, sometimes it favors the seller. It depends on the different situations for why it's being returned. The next question, what do you do with items that don't sell? Now for me specifically, normally it's video games and consoles that I list on eBay. Sometimes I list other things and try to go outside of my boundaries, but most of the time it's video games and consoles. Now, sometimes it does take a couple months for an item to sell. But also I do list high and then start to come down on my price a little bit. Sometimes I might get lucky and when I list high, it might sell high and that's extra profit in my pocket. Other times it might take a couple months and over that time, I will lower what I'm asking for that price and then it will sell. Sometimes I'm just asking way too much or sometimes it really depends on the item of what people actually want to pay for it. Even if the sold comps look high, sometimes people don't want to pay what the sold comps say. Now for me, if it's a video game, I'm not just going to get rid of it if it doesn't sell after months. I'm gonna keep it, hold on to it, maybe liquidate it or put it into a bundle. Now for other things like the plushies I had a while ago, 
I ended up just donating them because it was going to be a pain to ship them. It was no profit to be made. They weren't worth anything where I thought when I bought them, they were going to be. I ended up just donating to them, taking the $50 loss and getting rid of them and moving forward with other items. Sometimes whenever items don't sell or you know it's gonna be a loss, it's better just to donate them, get rid of them at your cost of what you paid for them rather than trying to deal with eBay fees, shipping, and still making a loss. Less headache for you and easier to manage. The next question is items sold with the most profits. So for me personally, I have had some great success. I had a uh, Nintendo 3DS lots. I think it was the uh, limited edition Dream Team for Mario and Luigi. So it was silver with an orange outline of both Mario and Lu Luigi on it. Uh, that there, I think I made $175 profit on the lots because it included a Mario game, a Pokemon game, and another game, and they all sold very, very high. The console itself sold very high, so I think total profit on that was $175. Um, I also purchased an Xbox 360 Halo 3 edition with a ton of games. That sold for almost $200 profit at the end of the day. Um, I did buy a ton of Xbox One games. Ooh, this would have been like maybe a year ago, and I think I talked about it uh, on the channel. The, those there, I paid $45 for it, and I think it sold for $200 profit when all of the games finally were sold. About $200 profit. Other than that, sometimes I can make $100 per different console that I have, depending on what I bundle with it. But yeah, those are most of my most profitable sales that I've had on eBay. The next question, what do you do with items that are not paid for? Now, uh, eBay has a policy for this, of course. Whenever I started, the policy was different. Now it's a lot easier for the seller to be able to manage and appropriately take the right action. Now for me personally, if an item doesn't sell, whether it's an auction that ended and I'm waiting for the person to pay for it, or they sent me an offer, I accepted it, and they just haven't paid for it, I'm still waiting on their payments. Usually I'll wait two days, I'll send them a reminder. I'll wait another two days, I'll send them a message. If they bought a video game lot or a video game console, usually I'll ask them if they want any other video games that I have listed and I won't charge them any additional shipping. Sometimes I was able to get extra sales that way and they end up paying but also buying extra stuff. Sometimes I get no response. So if I get no response, usually on the fifth day, I'll usually cancel the order and put item not paid for. I can't remember back in the old day when I started eBay, uh, almost a year ago whenever I started reselling, it would affect their accounts. Now I don't know if it affects the buyer's accounts if an item is not paid for. I can't remember, I haven't had it happen personally to me, so I'm not sure if they changed that, but that's usually how I approach it. After two days of not being paid for, I'll send them a reminder. After four days, I'll send them a message and try to upsell. If after the fifth day they don't pay, then I'll usually cancel the order for an item not paid for. And the final question is one that I receive quite a bit, and that is, do you look up sold comps for everything? Honestly, not anymore. Back when I started eBay, I looked up sold comps for literally everything, uh, depending on what I was looking for. If it's video game stuff, back then I was really learning what I should be paying for all of the video games and consoles that I was buying. So I did look up sold comps for literally everything. Now I'm at the points when it comes to video games and consoles that for consoles specifically, at least the ones that I've sold, I know kind of what things are gonna sell for and different limited edition Nintendo 3DSs or consoles. I'll look them up and see if they're really profitable. Sometimes they are. There was an R2-D2 Xbox 360 that somebody was asking for 200. I looked it up, found out the console's only worth about what a regular one is, around $100. So um, the more you buy and sell, and the more you learn with eBay, the more you know what things are going to be likely selling for without having to look them up. But of course, looking up sold comps is the best way to determine what something's gonna sell for on eBay and what you realistically should be paying for it. But for video games, most of the time, whenever it's a video game lot, I'll look through quickly. I'll pick out certain ones that I wanna look up sold comps to see if they're gonna be really good ones. Sometimes I get lucky and I'll find ones that are worth about $20 each. Sometimes I'll find ones that are worth maybe $50 each if they're semi-rare or something like that or more valuable ones. 
But for the most part, most video games that I've found are around the $5 to $10 mark. So that's how I kind of price out whenever I try to purchase these lots. Now, depending on how many video games are included, normally when it comes to me, I'll always pay likely between $70 to $100 for the lots. Consoles most of the time sell for around $100 and then whatever you can get for the video games. If there's some really good ones, there's some decent profit to be made. And that's what I tend to do. Now, when it comes to thrift stores, that's usually me hunting for things that are outside of my niche of video games. And usually I'll look up sold comps for anything that I come across that I think is really cool to see if it's worth money. I might look up sold comps for literally everything I find. Whereas if I'm on Facebook Marketplace looking up video games, I'll kind of browse and I'll look to see what people are asking for the items and then see what they have and look up different things that are included in their lots. But I'm not going to look up everything because I want to try to minimalize how much I'm looking up. That way I have more time to spend browsing and looking for things to buy. So now that I've been doing it for a while for video games and that, I kind of know what to look for. But when it's other things outside of my elements, I usually always look up sold comps for. So these are all of the questions that I've been receiving, whether it is ones that people have commented on previous eBay videos or have messaged me privately. These are the ones that I keep seeing quite a bit. So I wanted to finally sit down and do an eBay Q&A. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope some of these answers did help you. And now you know a little bit more about how I run my eBay business in a way. So hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I'm going to leave this here. Please take care. If you have any more questions, comment them down below and I might do another eBay Q&A video in the future, but I'll wait until I have enough new questions asked before I make another video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Please take care. Peace.